approach of this book to you in the past. It is here, it is, it has arrived. I have a copy and I've actually read it. And my mom's quite impressed. I read everything I've done in my life. She's pretty impressed, but now she's very impressed because I've made it onto a front of the book. I think I need a round of applause. I've made it. No, I've made it. I've made it. Jessica has always been my friend. She's an incredible woman. And for her to be able to put down her words and to be able to be vulnerable in this book is quite commendable. If you get a chance, please read this book. Get it. It's only 200 rand. What can you get for 200 rand these days? You will learn a lot. It's not just the page turner. It's definitely going to turn out. It's been a piece of turner over the past. It's incredible. And I'm going to read exactly what I said. I said, Jess draws the lessons in the book from her own triumphs and failures authentically and foolishly. I usually only read Twitter and scripts, but this book was an easy read. It's not just a page turner, but it will help you turn over lots in your business. So please get this book. It really has changed the way I view business. And she has, she speaks about boxing in this book. And I am a boxer. Uh, I have five, five fights, five wins. <laughs> and I'm a great friend of his good husband who's in, in the fighting industry. So please, once again, five, uh, two and a half, say five hundred men, three hundred four cents. Just will sign it at the end. Uh, we have a couple of speakers here tonight who are going to be saying a few words. People who have actually been following me for years, and I only realized that I have been following them for years when I went to Google and like, ah, but I recognize this guy from Ida. So <laughs> this man here, he's going, be, he's going to be here earlier. And I met the other gentleman, I'm good friends with his wife, and he said it's a company. I was like, what did I do? I said, no, you just went for a while. Said, Thank goodness I did nothing wrong. So we have two incredible speakers who will be talking for a very short time. And then we have the queen, the bee, the VIP lady who created this book. And it's a desert of it once again to have you here. Can you please give a round of applause for putting these words uh, on So what is the hashtag? Do you have a hashtag? There it is, B plus. Please use the hashtag it and take pictures, take selfies, and you should trend tonight. Please make sure we trend. Up next, the first guy who's gonna be speaking is Marcus Brewster, and we've known him from Idols. Marcus is the founder of the chairman of Marcus Brewster PR, with more than 20 years of experience in public relations and media layers. Marcus holds double honors, double honors in language as well as master's degree from the University of, uh, we we'll call it RITS these days. He has, I repeat, double honors in language as well as a master's degree. I have a grade 12, on my 13th gap year, so you're doing a lot better than me. I'm still on my gap year, and you have all these things. He's also been named one of the 10 most influential people in communication and PR. Please, it says here, clap, clap, clap. So please, put your hands together for Marcus. Please put your hands together for Marcus. He wasn't idle. Now you recognize idle. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, sir. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Thank you very much, Jess, for asking me, A, to contribute a forward to your book, but also the opportunity just to say a few words this evening. I think what's interesting about the title of the book is it's a slight misnomer. This is not about being a boss. It's about being an entrepreneur, being a self-starter, um, getting into the world of employment through your own volition. And I think it's interesting... I have a sense that within the next two to five years, everybody in this room is going to be in the position that Jess describes in her book. We're moving into uh, an on-demand economy, and that on-demand economy, which we know through things like Uber and Airbnb, is where employers will only want to take on freelance contractors or external contractors for project-related work. I think that the bloggers in the audience already, are, they're part of that kind of community, they're part of that shift in the career workplace. And I think for a lot of other people, a lot of media workers specifically, this is where the world is moving to. I've certainly seen it in my industry, the PR industry. It's all about moving to outsourced, trying to find people to work with you. And so everybody in the room, ultimately, is going to have to learn how to be boss because you are all going to become your own freelance champions of your own economic output. So this is a veritable Bible of what you're going to need to know. The Ten Commandments of How to Get Ahead as a Self-Starter, they're all in this book. And so I thoroughly endorse 
everybody getting a copy because believe me, you're going to need to know what's happening in this book in the next 24 months. Jess, well done, congratulations. going to be brief but hopefully poignant. I always say to the people I work with, if you do what you always did, don't be surprised if you get what you always got. And Jace is the complete opposite of that. There are always talkers and there are doers. And Jace is a doer and so I just wanted to congratulate her for launching her book and first and foremost. So can I have a round of applause for that? I've been writing my book since I was about 15. I've done chapter one about nine, 10,000 times. But she's actually done it. Um, I did tell her before, I've never been a fan of self-help books. Uh, a self-help book is one that is written with the intention to instruct its readers on solving their personal business problems. But I can emphatically tell you that this is not that book. Um, she asked me to read it before it got published, and to be honest, I couldn't actually put the book down. Um, I just admired the way that she admitted her own shortcomings, when they tripped her up, how she overcome them. Any person who's starting a new business venture of their own should read this book. Like myself, you'll find many of your own personality traits, obstacles, observations, resonating with her own story. She has a finger on the pulse as well with where business is going in a disruptive and ever-changing, innovative environment. And I, I certainly took home a lot of new insights with me from Big Boss. So I just want to congratulate her again and thank you for having me. And uh, I wish you the best of success with the book. Thanks. Thank you very much. Now, the boss thing is about to come up to say a couple of words about the book. We can have a question and answer session straight afterwards. Now, I've known Jess for about six years. Uh, about six years. And one thing I can say about her is she always ends up putting others before herself at all times. And sometimes the business, there isn't much to do that. And sometimes I'm not to do that. She's an incredible mother. Jess is the owner of a company called Jam Media. Jess is one of the successful established three SMEs mm -hmm. and opened Jam Media stores in 2012. Now the author of being boss, Jess is the wife of Mike, who is the most incredible, loyal human being in the world. Most loyal of people, they make a great team. Mother to two beautiful kids and a kick ass in the ring. You should see her do her thing. Please put together, put your up together, English will get you. 
please put your hands together for a personal friend of mine, a lady who I have utmost respect for, who can make anything happen at any time. When she says she's going to be somewhere, she will be there 15 minutes before. When she says she will kick your ass, she will kick your ass. And when you are wrong, she will tell you you're wrong and how many degrees of wrong you are. And those are my kind of humans. Another thing that I really like about the coaches is how you're willing to be vulnerable in the book and you mentioned it earlier. Um, and I think vulnerability is one of the most important qualities in a human. It, it shows power in ways you can never imagine. And you being vulnerable to people who are about to read the book, I think is commendable. And I love you to the world at that. I'll be sending you my invoice for this gig later. <laughs> Jim, please put your hands together for a personal friend of mine, the boss of the queen, Jess. Let's go to Jess. Thank you so much, you were all. I've never heard so many amazing people say such amazing things about me, so I feel incredibly spoiled tonight. Thank you so, so much. Iqbal's here, yay. Sorry, <laughs> I just saw you now. Um, one thing I just need to say is that I think that everybody that owns a PR company should have their team plan an event where they're the client once in their life, just so that they can experience what it's like to actually be the client in their own, in their own agency. And that was a phenomenal experience for me. So thank you to each and every one of my Jam fam for, while keeping all of your balls in the air for all our actual real clients, for going through the effort to make tonight the success that it is. So thank you so much for that. Thank you as well to each and every one who's attending tonight, my friends and family, thank you. And of course, my mentors, the media that are here, a very special thank you to Siv, to Marcus, and to Robbie for being here tonight and for being so giving with your praise in, in getting this book together. I really appreciate that. Another big thanks go to, goes to Vanessa, as well as Georgina, who couldn't be here tonight, Kerry and my dad for their role in putting this book together. Okay, so I, like many people, have always felt that I've had the story to tell or this book that I've wanted to write. Um, many people feel that way. And um, those that have read the book or who know me personally will know that my pre-business life was already quite a full and colorful one. Um, I got up to some interesting things. It was, um, it was not really the story that I wanted to tell though. Believe it or not, the story of the sad and poor little girl from the suburbs who was raised who raised herself on boys and drugs and who hit rock bottom and found Islam and then got married and lived happily ever after. Believe it or not, that story had already been written and had been told. So I wanted to write something different. I'd set myself a goal of writing a book before I turned 30. And towards the end of last year, I became very stressed that I wasn't going to be able to add the words author to my Twitter bio before hitting the big 3-0. And so I quickly got in touch with Georgina, my editor, and said, right, so what is this book? What are we going to write? and Being Boss was born. I was itching to write something that would be relevant for young people, for millennials, and for women in business. I desperately wanted to see something else on the business bookshelves that wasn't written by an old white American man. That was very important to me. And um, just like when I created my second business, Mommy Matters, um, it was a blog and it was a business centered around being a mom. I told real stories of my challenges and frustrations as a mother, and I wanted this book to be just as real. I, I think we look to business books and entrepreneurial magazines for advice and support, and often we get the photoshopped version, the glamorized version of entrepreneurship. Just like when we look at Photoshop models um, in magazines, we feel fat and ugly, I think often we feel quite incompetent when we read business magazines and feel that we're just not, not good enough, or business books and feel like we're just not good enough. So I wanted to tell the real unmasked stories of failure, the kind of failure that you're bound to have in a startup, losing talent, messing up with clients, striving for work-life balance and failing miserably. It's all in there with a dash of humor, I hope, because ultimately if you can't stop and laugh at yourself every once in a while, then life is just really so much harder. One of my very first clients, who I'm glad is here tonight, I'm very grateful to be able to say that he's become more than a client and he's a friend as well, Dr. Iqbal Karbani. He always speaks about the first 1,000 days in a child and how important and critical that is. So I guess in a sense I was somehow inspired by, by those words and looked at the 1,000 days in, in a child and how important that is and wanted to relate that to, to business. 
So this book aims to take you through those critical days from birth, infancy, toddlerhood, but instead of the usual connection that women often make in business where they talk about their business being their baby, I wanted to relate this to something I connected with business in a far greater way and that's boxing. So a sport that I've been involved and practiced in for so long and it's also something that I could see the, the re very clear connection between the art of boxing and the challenges you find and, and how that fits with, birth, with, with business so perfectly. So as Muhammad Ali and so often say, the ring is the wrong place to get tired and your startup is the same, it's the wrong place to get tired. The hard work has to be done in those first three years, no matter how tired and exhausting, no, no matter how many times you want to wrap yourself in bubble wrap and have somebody spoon feed you Nutella from the bed, you have to keep stopping and leaving and rolling with the punches and that's ultimately how you ensure that you create a successful startup. So thank you so much everyone for being here tonight, it really means the absolute world to me for taking the time out and I hope you enjoy the book and I can share some small nuggets of